Good afternoon, Numi Nation. Happy to meet you here on the New Minds Podcast, episode 34. What do y'all think of the the new tunes, the new intro and outro, the new the branding? So it's fascinating to watch things organically evolve over time. When we launched this six weeks ago, this slot was just that end of day to kind of wrap up the day's programming and things like that. But lo and behold, we started having conversations and exploring different types of topics and different angles. And it has evolved into this new platform, which we're calling the New Minds Podcast. And I'm super excited. You know, it is a podcast and you can see the tagline is inspiring conversations, transforming lives. That being said, I don't necessarily want to promise that every single episode we're going to uh, have a, a guest. Now and then it may still be just Mr. Ben popping up with some thought nuggets, with some deep, you know, hopefully deep insights for you to ponder. And we'll go from there. It's a different kind of conversation, right? It's sort of like an implied slow motion conversation between my mind sphere and your mind sphere. Cool stuff, right? So today, we looks like we've got some team members on. Mr. T, super fan, front row seat. <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. T's on. I think I saw Shay jump on. Uh, Miss Janet is on as well. So today, here's what we're going to do as my printer, as a ghost turns on my printer behind me, right? The things that happen, the things that happen in Zoom calls, on podcasts, on videos. It's just fun stuff. You got to embrace it. So listen, um, one thing that I, I love, I, I love like I love school in a way, but not until college for some reason. Total total confession here. I was kind of a slacker's a little bit strong, but I was very apathetic in high school. Like I just kind of floated through, you know, did what had to be done, kind of got it done. But then when I got to the university level and had kind of a lot more volition into what I could pursue at a deep level, I absolutely, I absolutely loved taking disparate pieces of information and text from different subjects, from different eras, from different authors, and putting them together so that it's almost like scraping those things together sparked the new light. That's how I always saw it. And to me, that's like the true, the true power of academia is when you can take these disparate thoughts, thinkers, and insights and kind of bring them together and they kind of form this new solar system of ideas this new space for reflection to exist. So that's what I've done today. So I can't tell you exactly where the seed for today's topic came from, um, but you know, I've been thinking a lot with all the conversations we've been having on the podcast, you know, on and off air about this moment in time in terms of parenting and childhood, you know, an opportunity to sort of reinvent the relationship between parent and child, an opportunity to see deeply into your child's childhood and kind of the magic they're bringing in the world. I think that's where this seed came from. So our first excerpt today is from a book you, you may know and love. And if you don't yet, I think you will. And it is uh, The Little Prince, you know, a beautiful, deceivingly simple classic tome on the magic of imagination in childhood. I, I even have the El Principito in Spanish right here. So I want to start here with the, it's, it's actually the opening of the book. I think it's very powerful. Okay. So this is, a, you know, the author kind of reflecting back on when he was six years old. Okay. So our first excerpt today is from The Little Prince. Once, when I was six, I saw a magnificent picture in a book about the jungle called True Stories. It showed a boa constrictor swallowing a wild beast. Here is a copy of the picture. And I'm going to do my best for you guys to see. All right, so that's, that's the picture that he saw in that, story, in that book, True Stories. In the book, it said, Boa constrictors swallow their prey whole without chewing. Afterward, they are, no long, they are no longer able to move and they sleep during the six months of their digestion. In those days, I thought a lot about jungle adventures and eventually managed to make my first drawing using a colored pencil. My drawing number one looked like this. Okay, so this six-year-old, that's their drawing and they were so proud of it. 
They were so happy. They were thrilled. I showed the grown-ups my masterpiece, and I asked them if my drawing scared them. They answered, why be scared of a hat? My drawing was not a picture of a hat. It was a picture of a boa constrictor digesting an elephant. Then I drew the inside of the boa constrictor so the grown-ups could understand. They always need explanations. My drawing number two looked like this. So he's kind of appeasing the adults and making it super explicit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going the wrong way here. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is like a mind puzzle. Okay, so that's his second drawing. That's the elephant inside the boa constrictor, right? The grown-ups advised me to put away my drawings of boa constrictors, outside or inside, and apply myself instead to geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar. That is why I abandoned, at the age of six, a magnificent career as an artist. I had been discouraged by the failure of my drawing number one and of my drawing number two. Grown-ups never understand anything by themselves, and it's exhausting for children to have to provide explanations over and over again, right? So there's like so many layers to this. On the one hand, it's kind of like an innocent, intentionally naive portrayal of a six-year-old's perception of the situation, right? That the adults just couldn't understand his drawing that to him was so obvious. On the other hand, for me, this is like, very sad and almost violent because here we have the depiction of a potential pathway, a potential passion, um, just getting crushed by what seemed like innocuous comments from the adults. They're just encouraging him to go study school subjects and do well in school. But what they've done inadvertently is kind of like crush this potential pathway to joy, to inspiration, to insight. And kind of like, you know, it's this thing that we've been, as adults, we've been trained to take things at surface value and we demand logical explanations. We demand pragmatism. We demand a reason. Whereas the child's imagination kind of transcends those boundaries and, and limitations. And I just want, I'm putting this out there, not to lecture or preach, but I want to ask us, ask ourselves as adults, like how many times have we inadvertently, you know, with good intentions, shut down a little piece of imagination, a little piece of imagination. You know, I think we've talked before, even in this segment about, you know, at New Minds, we're really big about the imaginary, the imagination process. And when you do projects like the cardboard challenge, for example, it's really not about that final product, what it actually looks like in your 3D world. It's about what it looks like from the heart and soul of the kid. And very similar to that hat drawing, it's about the depth of imagination that went into that creation and their own kind of childhood magical logic. And I just want to put this out there. Like, is this, is this sort of, you know, containment time an opportunity to just allow a little bit more space for that? I know as a teacher, I would always consciously make an effort to leave space for that and even indulge it a bit you know whenever i had when a when a child came forward with something whimsical or light like that and if i ever felt that impulse to kind of shut it down you know i can't say that i always was able to catch it right but when i felt that impulse come up to like shut it down i always paused and tried to ask myself what would it hurt to just nurture this a little bit where will this go maybe it will go nowhere Maybe the only thing it will do is reinforce something new, reinforce to this child that, you know what? The whimsical and the layered imagination is actually very valuable. Okay, there's that. And you remember how I talked about how I loved weaving together disparate ideas and texts and authors and quotes. That's what, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a real leap. So I've had the honor of actually of, of being in Lyon, the birthplace of Saint San Antoine, San Antoine de Santa Exupery, right? Um, beautiful, beautiful place. And this was, you know, he died in World War II. He was born around 1900. So this, you know, last century. So let's jump to a kind of a very contemporary thinker. This is another book kind of on my plate right now. 
It's by Bishan Lakiani. He's the founder of Mind Valley, which is kind of like a a self development university platform. They do kind of like lots of coaching and development courses. And he wrote this book called Code of the Extraordinary Mind. And it's really all about like really taking a, a very critical look at all of the rules that we construct around ourselves, right? He calls them rules, which is short for BS rules, okay? But there's a section on parenting and there's some good insights here for parents that that um, ties directly into the Prince excerpt, the Little Prince excerpt. So this is an excerpt um, from a chapter about rewriting your models of reality and it's about how we form beliefs as, beliefs as children. A short little excerpt I wanna read, okay? How we form beliefs as children. Belief hacking exer experts, Shelley Lefko and her late husband, Morty, who passed away just as I was writing this book, developed an incredible understanding of how beliefs influence our lives. I once asked Shelley, what's the single biggest piece of advice you could give a parent? Shelley said this, no matter what you do in any situation with your child, ask yourself, what beliefs is my child going to take away from this encounter? Will your child walk away thinking, I just made a mistake and I learned something great, or I'm insignificant? There are many opportunities to practice this wise advice. Absolutely. That's just like a simple filter, a simple check. And I like that one because it's not about, you know, here's a scripted list of things you should say, you know, here's like the formula. It's asking yourself how your child leaves that interaction. Did your child leave that interaction thinking, you know, okay, I made a mistake, but that was awesome because look how much I learned or I'm insignificant or I'm wrong. Okay. I like that heuristic because you can take situations like the strange drawing of a hat that you don't understand and think about how you want to reinforce it. Right. Do you need to shut that down? Do you want to shut it down or can you encourage some aspect of it? Okay. Good stuff. And uh, the last link I'm going to make today, we're going to jump across the globe once again um, and look at a classic. So this is Cahil Gibran, the, the, the great Lebanese sage, mystic, wise man, author, thinker. Um, I actually had the cool experience of reading this in Lebanon and having been to some of the beautiful places that uh, surely inspired him. So there's this short excerpt. So he, the, the pro, this book, The Prophet, is kind of divided in topically, right? And there's a, a short section on children. I think it's a very powerful way to kind of close this short session today. So this is Cahil Zaran, his section on children from The Prophet. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to have them but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite and he bends with you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. For even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. Wow, I don't know about you, but as a parent, I just I just got some goosebumps, right? That's super powerful stuff. Um, super powerful stuff. Uh, I wanted to kind of close with that. I don't want to overinterpret it because it's intended to operate like a lot of sort of poetic, mystical wisdom writings. It's intended to sort of penetrate at different levels. So I want to let that hang there. I encourage you to go. I'll do a quick recap of the sources that we took inspiration from today in just a moment. We've got some good input here from superfan Mr. T. He says, I too went from 
went from school duds list to university dean's list when my passion was discovered. Yeah, similar story to mine, like kind of a mediocre high school career, not really enthralled. I could kind of coast along. But then when I had the chance to really grab onto something that interested me, that's when it's like, whoa, it's actually kind of easy. Okay. Yeah. And he, he also makes making a connection to one of our previous podcast guests, Kathy Goose Cordero. She came on and we were talking a lot about insights of the homeschool situation. That was a great episode. I need to memorize the episode number so I can refer people back. So today we, we looked at the power of layered imagination from childhood. We looked at the little prince and how dangerous it is, even following our instincts to coach kids, how dangerous it is that we may be shutting down their imagination. We looked at you know, a heuristic we can use, a filter we can use by asking ourselves, how was our child going to leave this interaction? Feeling that it was rich, a good experience to, to having learned something from, from a mistake or having felt shut down, like am I insignificant, powerful. And then finally, sort of like the logic penetrating wisdom of Cahil Gibran in The Prophet and that, wow, that powerful imagery of a parent as the bow and the child as the arrow implication there we don't really control the arrow you know we are the stable bow that launched them on their trajectory into the infinity of life and the mystery of life but our job is to be the bow in that context right so powerful stuff i'm you know it's one of those things actually just mr justin and i you know my co-founder and business partner and the the host of the morning show we were chatting the other day about both of us have this habit and i'm sure a lot of you do as well of all having like too many books going at once too many uh you know pans on the stove you might say but i just can't i don't have any other way it's like kind of how my mind works is at any given time i've usually got a piece of fiction uh a p one or two pieces of non-fiction including maybe some self-development maybe something in the spiritual realm maybe something related to education. It's like a book of poetry, like all these things kind of have to be cooking at the same time. And that's when these like magical unexpected sparks come together. That to me is like true academia. Like that's what it's really about is those sparks kind of coming together across space, across time. It's really magical. We'd love to hear about like how you, how you handle your reading habits. And if you've had like unexpected magic sparks come from that. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you like kind of the rebrand and the reshaping of the show. It is the New Minds podcast. And uh, this the, season two of New Minds TV officially launches next week. And that's when I'll formally stop calling this the end of the day show. But now it's kind of like that in-between state. So on mon next Monday, this will formally and officially be the New Minds podcast. Like I said, as often as possible, we're going to have insightful you know, wise guests on, we're going to have conversations that are, that are rich. Other times it's going to be me dropping little nuggets like this. And so either way, we hope you find it enriching and enjoyable and uh, have a beautiful evening. Take care. Thanks again for tuning in to the New Minds podcast. And wow, not only do we have an intro, but we have an outro. So check this out.